get ready because today we have a fun Notion tracker build to do together. It is a workout tracker, and this is going to be extremely motivating for you to stay active. You're gonna actually want to fill it out because it's just really fun to see the data populate, and it's a lot easier actually. I, like, I find that I can work out easier because it's so organized in Notion. I don't have to like decide what workouts I wanna do in the morning because they're already selected for me. So this is going to be a two-part video series. We're gonna do part one today, which is going to create a super basic, simple, functional workout tracker that I used for about one to two years. And then there were some features that I was like, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if we could do this inside Notion. Turns out we can. So in part two, we're going to advance your skills a little bit farther and bring in automations and formulas. But first, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't subscribed yet, it takes two seconds to do so, and you are going to get videos about planning and productivity, personal growth, and Notion tutorials. And I love when those things go together because we're pursuing habits and goals with our workout tracker, and we can do it inside Notion. So I love combining multiple loves together. Before we start building out the actual database, let me give you a peek of what we'll be working on. We're gonna create a health and wellness dashboard, a little bit simplified version of this because I have like fitness and nutrition info on here. I have medical info, which by the way, if you're interested in building out a medical visit log or even I use the same thing for a vet visit log to track and log all of your medical visits, I'll put the link in the description. Then you can go to that specific video because I show you how to build that from scratch and it's super helpful. I have a self-care section and then a workout calendar, which gives me a month at a view of all the workouts that I completed that month. But what we're going to be building is the actual workout database. We'll do the health and wellness dashboard a little bit later in this video, but you can see that a database is basically like an Excel spreadsheet on steroids. Every single page in this database correlates to a different workout. And databases have properties, which are the equipment, the length, the targets, the type that we have here that add context to each page. And the reason why we use those instead of just a normal page is because they help you filter and sort the information based on what you want to see. That will make sense in a little bit later. But first, let's build this out and we'll go into my demo template account and click new page and we'll just name this workouts. And we wanna turn this directly into a database using the table view. So I'm gonna click table, click new database over here and you can add an icon or a cover if you wanted. We'll just add a quick dumbbell icon here to say that this visually represents our workouts. Now, like I said before, every workout is a page in this database. So I'm gonna click on this and type in a new workout. And to make it a little bit more interesting, let's go to Heather Robertson and put one of her workouts in here because she is like the fitness influencer that I love following. If you are not into rah, rah, rah type of videos that are like encouraging you along the way, and some people are into that, it's fine. I'm not judging. I'm going to highlight this no repeats hit workout. Go back into Notion and add that as the name. I'm just gonna change that to lowercase so it's, and remove the exclamation so we're not shouting at each other about it. You can also increase or decrease these columns by clicking the middle vertical divider and dragging them. And then we want to add our properties to this. So they've already given us a multi-select tag property, which we can actually use for the body target, the, the body part that this specific workout targets. Multi-select means that you can add multiple tags to one page. A select property is just one tag per page. We're gonna use both. But for here, let's click on this and name it target. And we'll click edit property. And over here on the right, you can see add in option. So let's add in legs, arms, and I'm just typing and hitting enter. Um, full body, but what else is there? Um, I know some have targeted like the back. And then if you wanted to change the colors of any of these, you could just click the little arrow and make them a different color. So now no repeats hit workout. I believe it said full body. Yep, full body. So we're gonna click that. 
and also decrease that column. Now let's add another property by clicking the plus icon here. You can actually create properties in multiple locations. You could do it here or you could go into the actual page and add a property here. So let's do a select property where there is only one tag per page and let's name this length because it's helpful, at least for me, when in the morning I'm looking for a workout, I can actually see what the length, like what I have time for. So let's do this as like a less than 10 minutes workout. Let's also do a 10 to 16 minute workout. And then we'll do 17 to like 25 minutes. And then we'll do 26 to 30 minutes and 30 plus. This one is 30 minutes. So let's just do the 26 to 30. You can drag these properties around depending on the order that you want to see them. Let's also add a, another multi-select property and let's name this equipment. So we wanna know what equipment is required for this workout. Dumbbells maybe, um, a resistance band, kettlebell, so anything that you would have, this is very helpful if let's say you were traveling and you wanted to go find a workout that didn't require any equipment at all because you couldn't bring what you had at home. This one is no equipment, so I'm gonna leave that blank. We have, I believe, one more multi-select to do. Yes, type of workout. So whether this is cardio, strength, a mix of in-between, or maybe just a walk or yoga. So let's do type and whoop, add cardio and strength. We'll do walk and we'll do yoga or like a stretch routine. This one is a HIIT workout, so it's definitely going to be cardio. Two other properties we may want to add is a link to the workout video and then a text property for notes. So let's add those and search for URL and we can go to the video, click share grab that link, pop it in there. That's just so we have easy access to that workout. We don't have to like search for it on YouTube. We can just click the link. And I like to add a text property and rename it notes because I like to know, is this like a super fast paced workout? Is there jumping? How many circuits do you have to do? Does it raise, is it low impact? Does it raise your heart rate? The notes option just gives you space to write whatever you wanna write. It's not like hard and fast like a tag where you only have one or two things that you could select. I'm also going to add a icon to this. So let's just do like a person and let's add the thumbnail of the video to this cover. Now, over here on my workout section, the reason why I like doing this is because on my personal dashboard, I like to embed the number of workouts that I am choosing for the week. And I like to see this in a gallery view of that database so it's more visual and I can be like, oh, like I wanna do this one. I don't know, it just looks more nice and enticing and I feel like we need all the help that we need to be able to get out and get active and actually do our workouts. So whatever helps, right? So let's go back into our workout and add the thumbnail. Now, how do we add the thumbnail besides like trying to take a screenshot and it's super grainy? Plus, you don't necessarily want to do that because when you change the cover and upload your own image, you have a max on the free plan of five megabytes and that uses up quick, like space quickly. You'll probably only get five or six notes out of it. So let's instead find the link address for the specific image. And we can do this by going to YouTube dash thumbnail grabber dot com dash grabber dot com. Here is where you can put the actual video URL and then click get thumbnail images and boom, there it is. It has one that is nice and big for you so it's not super pixelated. So you wanna right click on this and click copy image address. Go back into Notion and paste that image link and click submit and it's going to upload it and it's not going to use any of your storage space. 
Back on this all workouts page, let's actually retitle this all instead of table. Right click on the tab, click rename and title it all. And then I wanna move some of these properties around because I don't like the order that they are in. So let's do the length first and then target, then type. Then we'll do equipment, URL and notes. And that looks a little bit better. You can add as many workouts to this database as you want, one per page. I also recommend doing something simple like walk, or a bike ride. Let's do a icon for this as a sneaker. Just so that when you do your daily journal entry, which is what we're going to build in a little bit to connect to this workout database, you can still say that you were active by choosing that you went on a walk. Normally I just do like just walk, depending on how, it doesn't matter how long I walked, but if you wanted to, you could put in walk a mile, walk two miles, walk three miles, whatever you wanted to do it's totally up to you. So we'll just say this is like a 20 minute walk and full body, no equipment needed, no URL. And then we'll also add, let's see, say you did a Peloton ride. I don't think I spelled that right. Peloton, Peloton, there we go. <laughs> Peloton ride, open that up. Let's add a bike icon to it. and 30 minute ride, targets the legs and equipment. I'm gonna need a bike for that. So I created that real quick. And the type, that is going to be a, well, depending on how fast you ride, probably a cardio. And I just realized on the walk, I didn't put in the type on that, just a, a simple walk. It's not necessarily a cardio or, or a strength. Although I guess when you're power walking, that could be cardio. But anyway, you get the idea. Once you have 40 to 50 to 60 different workouts in this database, it's probably not going to be helpful to go to this view and try to find the workout that you actually want to do. Generally, you're probably wanting to see what the workout lengths are and choose a workout based on that. Or if it's leg day or you wanna target your abs, you want to select a workout based on that. So let's create different views of this database so we can see that information really quickly. I'm gonna click this plus icon at the top to add a new tab or a new view. And then I'm gonna go into the board view because I want this to group, and it already did this actually automatically for me, is it grouped by the length property. But it's not showing that I have the 10 to 16 minutes or the 10 less than 10 minutes tag on there because those are empty. So I'm gonna toggle those on with that little eyeball icon, and then I'm going to manually drag and drop and rearrange them so that they're in the right order. There we go. So now you can see that any workout that has these specific tags is going to show under the length tag. This is one of my favorite views so that I can go in and be like, I only have time for a 10 minute workout today. What do I have to choose from? Or I can do a longer workout today. What do I have to choose from? I'm gonna right click on the top tab and rename this by length. And then you could also change the icon to a little clock if you wanted to. Something that we didn't do inside each of these, which you could if you wanted to, if you wanted to take the time to, is change the icon for each of these properties. So like for equipment, you could click rename, click the icon, click the dumbbell icon, and you could change it for any of the properties that you wanted to, just to make it a little more fancy. The next view you might wanna create is, like I was saying, what body part does it target specifically? So you could do the same Kanban board view and just group it by body target. That might be the easiest, but I wanna show you something a little bit different in case you wanted to do it this way instead. But I'm gonna click the plus icon again. I'm actually just going to do, let's show you what a list view looks like. Cause it's just, it's simple, it's more minimalist. Sometimes you want it that way for things. And we're just going to say that this is for leg day. I'm going to change the icon to a 
pair of pants to show us that and let's click done and then we need to filter so i click the filter section up here filter by the target so target contains legs this is telling notion only show me the workouts where the leg tag is added so there it's just showing me peloton ride since this is leg day already i don't need the target property here because it's just going to say legs like all the way down to the screen so i'm going to click the three dots go into properties and toggle that off but i may want to see the length and i may want to see the equipment required for it so so those will just show up on the right hand side for this list view but you could do the table view you could if you wanted to see those visuals and see the cover images on a gallery view, you could choose to do that as well. But there's a lot of different ways that you can manipulate this database to show the information that you need to see, which is one of the things that makes Notion databases so powerful. Now it is time to move on to our daily journal database. This is what we want to build to be able to connect to our workout database and select the workout that we completed that day. So I'm gonna go to add a page and name this daily journal. I also want to turn this directly into a database, but I don't want a table view. So let's click more and create a calendar view. New database. Let's add a day icon. There we go. Let's add a cover on this one and just change it to like a flower. Feeling a super springy today. There we go. Now we can select whatever day we want to add a journal entry to by hovering over that day and clicking the plus icon. This is where we are going to add our different properties that we can then fill out every single day. So it already has the date property in there for us, which is great. That's one of the reasons why we did a calendar view. So it would do that automatically. We don't have to add that in and then you have to name it. So this is where like some people disagree with me on this. If you want the name to appear or the date to appear automatically in the name, you can do at today and it will say today, but I don't, or, or like tomorrow, it'll say at tomorrow or at yesterday or at next Tuesday. It's very relative in terms of the dates and you usually have to like right click and change it to show the actual date. I just rename it. I don't, maybe it's a little bit more work. I just name it the actual date because you're gonna see this daily journal database in a few different views of your Notion workspace and you don't wanna always have to click into it to see what the exact date was. So I just rename it. Let's also add an icon We'll do a day icon, but we'll make it pink. And then if you want to build out habits on this daily journal page, which we're not gonna spend a lot of time doing here, I'm just gonna add a few quickly because later on, as I'll show you, like it'll make it fill out a little bit more. But I did a whole build on habit tracking and using a daily journal database specifically for habits. So I'll leave that link to that video below and you can check that out. You already have part of it already filled out. But I'm just gonna do real quick, change this to a couple habit properties. Here's why we built this in the first place, to connect to the workout database. We are gonna do this via a relation property, and don't let that scare you. It's just a way to connect databases to one another. Add a property, search for relation, and it asks you what database do you want to add this to. So let's go to workouts and show on workouts, toggle that on, and then let's title this journal entries. Click add relation and boom, it pops up there. You can click on the empty section and you can search for any of the workouts that we created. If only like a few show on this page. So if you had 20 to 30 workouts on there, you could just search a keyword and it would pop up. So let's click no repeats hit workout and all relation properties are going to have this arrow next to it, but you can change that if you wanted to, to make it just look a little bit cleaner. Let's go into the workout database and see how this looks. So right here, it's showing journal entries on your 
specific workout of when you completed this workout. Now, I don't love the rolling up of the journal entries in the property section because after you get to five or six entries for one page, so let's say you did this workout five or six different times and had those entries, it truncates them and so you have to like click to view more. And I like to see what workouts I've done on what days just so that I can see when was the last time I did that workout. Has it been three or four months? Has it been six months? I wanna bring it around again. I like variety. I don't like repeating things often. And if there's a workout I haven't done in a while, then I'll put it back into my rotation. To do this, you can click the domino icon to change like the layout of this and click show as page section. This is what I prefer because as many entries as you have for this workout, it will just keep adding them to this full section. It's not gonna truncate everything. So let's go in and let's just say on the 31st, we did this workout again. So January 31st, 2024, and I will show you in a minute how to automate the icon so you don't have to select it every single time. But we'll choose that workout again. We'll go into that workout and you can see it's adding under the journal entries section. I just think it looks a lot nicer that way. To automate that icon, so you don't have to add it every single time, you can create a template. Go to the drop down arrow next to new, click new template, and then type in journal entry, add the icon that you would like to show, and then, oh, one more step. You have to click that drop down again and make it default. That is key. Otherwise, it's just going to be a default empty view that you have to then do an extra click to choose the template. So let's just do it automatically by setting that as default for all views. And we can go to the 18th. We can click an item and it's already there for us. We just have to rename that entry. Another way to automate your daily journal entries showing up so you don't have to like create them every single day is to use a recurring database template. Now, I love recurring database templates for this purpose. I do not love them for recurring tasks. I don't think they're great for that and I have a whole video about my soapbox on that issue if you want to go watch that. But for this, this makes sense. So let's go back into that drop down arrow and select the three dots next to journal entry. Up here on repeat, we're gonna say we want this to repeat every day. And every day at midnight, Notion will duplicate a page in this database for us. So let's click save. However, there is one more step that we have to do to make sure that it assigns the correct date. So we'll click edit to go back into this template, select the date and make sure it says today, date when duplicated. So when Notion duplicates a page every single day, it will automatically assign that day's date and that will show up in the right places. Over here on my personal dashboard page, I have this daily habit section. This is my daily journal embedded into my personal dashboard page. And every morning I come in here and there's a new entry waiting for me to rename and fill out with all my habits and my workout. It makes it really easy. You could leave your daily journal and your workout database on your sidebar and access them fine that way. I'm gonna show you though how to create a health and wellness dashboard page where we then can embed them in that page so you can see some different views like on that page at a glance and you don't have to click around to find what you need. So let's create a new page, name this health and wellness. This is just a plain page. And let's add a icon to this. Let's do the little heart rate icon and we'll open this in full page. I also want it to be full width because I wanna maximize the space on this page. So go to the three dots on the top right. If you wanna do that, toggle on full width. Let's also add a cover and we'll just do like a plant image for that. You can also, if you wanted to reposition this image and change it around, like drag it around to how you would like it to look and then just save it when you're done. All right, I want to add the workouts to this page just as a link to go into the database that we created. So I'm going to click over here 
on workouts and drag it into this page. But I want it to look a little bit nicer. So something that I do for like quick links or navigation sections on a page is I like to create a call out box. So I'm gonna use the slash command, type call to get call out to pop up. I'm gonna click that. It already has a link here emoji for me, but you could change that if you wanted to, if it ended up, it's always like the last one that you use. So if the last one you use was like a light bulb or something, you can change it to the link. And then I'm gonna title this quick links or you could title it navigation. Let's just bold that. And then let's also add a divider underneath. I love dividers. I think they can make your workspace so clean and aesthetic looking. So you can do three dashes for a divider and then drag that by clicking the domino icon underneath quick links. Now I want to add workouts underneath that inside this box. So I'm going to click the domino icon there, drag it under the divider. And you could add your food diary to this. You could add workout resources or like anything related to health and wellness, that medical visit log that I was talking about, you could add under this section. Now let's show you a different view of workouts so you can see that month at a glance, how many workouts you completed in a month. And to do that, we need to embed our daily journal database. So I'm gonna click the slash command. I'm gonna type linked, make sure it's linked view of database. Select that choose the daily journal database and we're, it has the calendar view already there. So we're gonna select that. I also wanna to toggle off this title page because I just really do not need to see that. Toggle that off. And here's a trick. If you just want like the icon to show and you don't want it to say calendar view because you just, I mean, you could rename it workouts if you wanted to, but I prefer labeling things via headers, which we'll do in a minute. But a trick you can get away with to not having text here is to add a little asterisk. Let me click off this and see it just, I don't know, I think it looks a lot nicer. So let's add a divider to this, or not a divider, I'm sorry, a heading. So I'm gonna do heading three and just say workout calendar and put that up, drag it up top above the calendar and we'll add a background to it just so it stands out a little bit more and also do another divider as well. Right now, we cannot see what workout we completed. We just know we have a daily entry on that day. So what we can do is go to the three dots and click the properties and make sure we show the workout property and that will show us what workout we completed. However, let's say that on the 18th, let's say we did January 18th and we didn't do a workout this day, it's still going to show on there. So we have to add a filter to make sure that the only entries showing on this page are going to be ones where the workout is selected. So I'm going to go into filter and say filter by workouts and make sure workouts is not empty. And see it took that entry on the 18th away but it left the entry on the 17th and the 31st. Something else that I want to add into this dashboard for you is what I showed you on my personal dashboard page, the daily habit section where I have my workout, I have the names, and I have my habits. That's why I added those habits really quickly, just so we would have something to show and to work with. So we're gonna embed our daily journal again, and let's click the plus sign, slash command, linked view of database, click daily journal, but we do not want the calendar view. We want a new empty view. And I am going to keep it on this table view, but I am going to toggle that title off because I just do not like seeing it. And we do not need to see the date property because we already have the date as the name. So I'm gonna right click on that property name, click hide in view, and then I'm going to shrink all of these habits. One of the nice things about checkbox properties is you can actually shrink them to just show that checkbox. Like every other column, you can only make so small, but checkboxes you can make as small as you want. So that's why it could be helpful to add an icon to those so you can see what they look like at a glance. And then we have the workout section here. 
However, I only want to show entries that are filtered to this week because otherwise this table would just grow and grow and grow and it's not going to be a very aesthetically pleasing page. So let's filter this by clicking filter, filtering it by the date and it's already actually set for us. The date is relative to today and this week. So if the date is found within this current week, then show it on this page, which it has. So now I want to make this look a little bit better and have two columns here on the top. Now, sometimes this doesn't work, the drag and drop method. So let's see if it works for me. Nope, Notion is being buggy about it. So there's two ways we can add columns. We can either drag it to the side of another block, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, or we can click the plus sign and we can do the slash command and find a column block. So I'm gonna say two columns, that's what we want to make and you can see I can hover over here and there's two different columns created. So let's just drag each of those blocks into their respective columns get rid of that extra space. You can hover in between the blocks for a divider if you wanna make the like quick link section a little bit smaller and the daily entry section a little bit bigger. We can also rename this to be this week. We can change the icon to be a weekly icon and we can also duplicate our heading. Oh, I don't wanna put it under there. Duplicate our heading and add it to above this week. And we'll just label this daily journal or journal entries, whatever it is that you wanted. Get rid of that extra space. And so now all your entries for this week are going to populate on this page and they're gonna do it automatically at midnight every night because you have it already set up. The other thing about having this daily journal section here is it's so easy to be able to click in a space and choose your workout rather than to open up the actual entry and choose your workout from there. So this wraps up part one of this two-part workout build series that we are doing. If you want to do part two with me, which builds on your skills, we start bringing in some formulas. We even bring in another database to aggregate some of the data. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you subscribe and join me in the next video.